you God, I thank you for seeing me through Yeah, yeah, yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah All I can say is hallelujah Hallelujah Yeah, yeah, yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah Thank you for victory Thank you for joy Thank you for peace Thank you for making a way out of nowhere Thank you for touching my mind Thank you for touching my body Somebody needs to praise him. As good as he's been to you, you the number one person should have your hands in the air. As many blessings he's put your way, as many doors he's opened, in fact, half of y'all need to stand up right now. As good as God has been to some of y'all, go ahead and give him glory. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody throw your head back and say thank you. Thank you. Throw your hands up and say thank you. Oh my God. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. The songwriter said for this I give you praise. Everybody in here had a this. You need to praise him for your this. For this, I'd give him praise. Somebody magnify him for your this. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for this moment we magnify you. For every mountain you brought me over. For every valley you've seen me through. I wish I had five in the house today. God, thank you. Somebody here know about some valleys in here. Thank you. You're a wonderful God. Here it is, Derek. He'll turn it around. He'll turn it around. Somebody needed that right there. Lift your hands. <laughs> Concerning you. Sooner or later, come on. It'll turn. He's turning around. For me. Come on, it's, it won't always. Come on. We won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Sooner or later, sooner or later. it'll turn. Lift your hands if you believe that. It's turning around for me. Come on, lift your hands one more time, everybody. It won't always come on, everybody. It won't always. 
always be like this. The Lord will perfect that. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Sooner or later, it'll turn. It'll turn in my favor. He's turning. <laughs> It's turning around for me. One more time, Roderick. Lift your hands if you need God to turn something around for you. It won't always, it won't always be like this. Come on, everybody. Come on. Yes, sir. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Sooner or later. <laughs> It's turn. If you have your Bibles, go to the 23rd Psalm. If you have your Bibles, go to the 23rd Psalm. What an awesome worship experience. Thank you. Thank you. He's turning it around. He's turning it around. Somebody felt that. He's turning it around. He's turning it around. Somebody got a breakthrough. He's turning it around. Somebody ought to praise him because he's turning it around. Amen. 23rd Psalm. When you found it, shot, I got it. Psalm 23. I told you all last week that I was going to do a two-part series on the 23rd Psalm. Uh, the intent primarily, not just to empower you to be a better um, witnesser for the Lord, which is part of it. But the other side of it is so that many of us are so familiar with this scripture that the question becomes, I know you can recite it, but do you believe it? And so sometimes when I am by myself, those questions, I've grown up with this scripture all of my life. You've heard it in every setting possible. But the question becomes, if you call yourself a believer, it has to be more than recitation. It has to be, do you believe the 23rd Psalm? Somebody say something to me. Because you can know something and still not know it. Somebody say amen. So it has to be something that gets into the recesses of your soul. So I've tried for the past, uh, last Sunday and this Sunday, I will try again uh, to extrapolate something that I think will help you in your walk with God. I shared with those of you last Sunday that really... Mm, the first three words describe the last 25 years of your life. If I had five, give me five, y'all. You don't need the rest. You can just say, the Lord is. Somebody help me in here. And that becomes your testimony. So let's read this together and try to preach it a little further. Uh, first of all, let me do this. I want to recognize, uh, Brother Bird reminded me, let me recognize all the veterans. If you're a veteran, raise your hand. Raise your hand, raise your hand. Somebody put your Bibles down. Give God praise for all of our veterans. Amen. We thank God for them. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. We thank God for your service. Say amen. Come on, y'all. Say amen. Thank God for your service to this country. The 23rd Psalm, let's read it together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Oh neighbor, God's got you. Let's go. Somebody say man. God's got you. On last week, we began this two-part series on the 23rd Psalm. The fact is, beloved, that each word in this psalm is a six-month series that could preach and teach all by itself. Say itself. 
Last week, I gave you the title of the series, which also serves as the sermon title for these past two Sundays, God's Got You. Somebody say, God's Got You. I present this title to you so that you and I would realize that we live in an unstable, unsavory, and unpleasant culture, but every day we ought to remind ourselves God's got us. Somebody say, God's got me. I began last Sunday with the story of Johnny. Y'all remember that? Say yes. Do y'all remember that? Say yes. Last Sunday, I told you the story about Johnny and the old mother and shared with you that the reason Johnny received the standing ovation completing the 23rd Psalm and mother recitation of the 23rd Psalm had folk crying and shouting, giving their lives to the Lord was because the Johnny knew the Psalm, but the old mother knew the shepherd in the Psalm. But not only did she know the shepherd in the Psalm, she knew the shepherd had her. Somebody say had her. I shared with you that this psalm could be the summary of David's life. This psalm could be the synopsis autobiography of David's life. This psalm could be, in many cases, it's a picture of his life, looking back over his life, testifying to the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, the palace and the pit. But no matter what God went through, David testifies God was right there. Say right there. See, beloved, David understood, and I believe uh, David understood that someday somebody would be reading his words, needing his words about what God meant to him in his life. David knew that life was not just about living. It's about having experience with God, having a connection with God, and being able to testify about it. Somebody say testify. I can't hear nobody say testify. What good is your experience? What good is your connection if you won't witness, if you won't testify, if you won't share with somebody how good the Lord has been in your life? Say in your life. David would not, he could not go another further from earth to glory without putting pen to paper and testifying about what the Lord had done for him. Say yes. Let me say something to y'all boldly and clearly. I want y'all to hear me. Please don't dismiss what I'm getting ready to tell you. Just like David, every last one of y'all in here got a 23rd Psalm in your spirit. Everybody in here, if you're honest, you got a story, you got a testimony, you got a witness about what the Lord has done in your life. Say yes. I can't hear y'all. Say yes. Watch this, because in order to give a testimony about God, it means you look back over your life and thus far you're not ashamed to identify the avenues and the areas that the presence of the Lord has been with you. Say yes. I believe our strength in transforming our communities and I believe even the world lies not only in our vision casting for the future, but it also lies in our casting back in our past. Say in your past. It's good to say my future is getting better. Somebody say yes. No, let me declare that for somebody. Your future is getting better. Say yes. It's good to say your future is getting better. But it's also good to say when I look back over my life and understand that I would not be where I am if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Say yes. My friend Pastor Mike called me last week and he gave me some news. Y'all remember Pastor Mike, right? Say yes. Y'all remember anniversary preacher? Say yes. Pastor Mike called me last week and gave me some news regarding an illness <clears throat> he had been dealing with sometime since his childhood. Uh, Pastor Mike called me. He had been dealing with sarcoidosis since he was born. Sarcoidosis, you all know, is a condition. Uh, it was what Bernie Mac had and others. And so Mike has been dealing with infections all of his life. Somebody say Amen. No, I say, say, man, he's been dealing with infections and sicknesses all of his life. When he and I met, we were 18, 19 years old. He's been dealing with infections in his body since he was that young, that young. We met each other. He called me last week and he was so excited. He says, he said, B, he said, I got something to tell you. He said, the doctors uh, told me that I don't have sarcoidosis after all. So I'm like, well, Mike, that's good. That's great. He said, he said, in fact, I have uh, the lowest form of antibodies you can have in your blood. I said, what you talking about? He said, Coleman, antibodies fight off the infection. He said, I have very few antibodies in my blood. I said, so in fact, what you're telling me is you shouldn't be here. He said, we'll get to that at a whole nother time. Y'all, we'll shout on that later. Somebody say amen. Uh, so, uh, so, the, so he said, he, he said he called another one of our classmates from Morehouse and he said, what did the doctors say when she came back with the report that you were in fact healed or that you didn't have this condition that you had no antibodies in your blood Uh, all she said was remarkable 
all of her years of medicine, all her response was remarkable. Now, the classmate says to Pastor Mike, I'd expect her to say that. Mike says, why? He says, because that reveals the limitations of her linguistic language. Mike said, what? He said, Rev, I'm so glad that our language is broader than the doctor's language. Her language is remarkable. Our language is if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. Our language is this joy that I have. The world didn't give it and the world didn't take it away. Let me put it on straight. Our language is when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. See, the problem is when your language is limited, you say remarkable. But some of us know he's a healer. Some of us know he's a doctor. Some of us know he's a way maker. Can I get 20 folk in here that got a broad language when it comes to your God? Slap your neighbor, say expand your language. Expand your language. What I'm trying to say to you is that just like David, all of us have a 23rd Psalm. Say yes. When you come to the conclusion that you're connected to God and that you have experience with God, then you have a 23rd Psalm. Your testimony is a witness to the fact that God's got you. Touch your neighbor. Say God's got you. Can I tell you, we need that word more than ever before, that our faith is not in vain, that you and I, you, you, you have to fight the spirit of insecurity, the fight, the spirit of isolation, the spirit of depression, the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of fear, the spirit of distress, the spirit of self-doubt, and the spirit of uncertainty. This psalm should remind us that even though the world is unstable, God is not. Even though the world is unhinged, God is not. Even though people in your office are crazy, God is not. Even though your family's dysfunctional, God is not. This psalm should be recited, but it also should be believed. Somebody say believe. For when it is believed, faith is activated and God is seen. See, faith breaks every spirit that does not liberate. You and I both can testify that you can know something and still not knowing something. Knowing this psalm is good, but believing this psalm is better. It's better because it counteracts doubt. It counteracts depression. It counteracts distress. When you know the 23rd psalm, you won't just recite it, you'll declare it. Somebody say, declare it. Reciting means you repeating the words. Pastor Coleman said, read the 23rd Psalm. And so you read the 23rd Psalm. But when are you going to get to the place where you don't just recite the 23rd Psalm, but you declare the 23rd Psalm? That you can look at your depression and tell depression, the Lord is my shepherd. That you can look at anxiety and tell anxiety, the Lord is my shepherd. You can look at your bank account and tell your bank account, the Lord is my shepherd. You can look at your body and tell your body, the Lord is my shepherd. You can look at your children and tell your children, the Lord is my shepherd. Is there anybody in here that you know the Lord is your shepherd? You don't have to walk. I need 30 folk to jump up now if you know the Lord is your Forget y'all. Forget y'all. Here it is. Don't ever think that the enemy takes a vacation from attacking you. Say yes. Y'all moving too slow for Pastor Coleman. Say yes. Here it is. Don't ever think that the enemy's not trying to steal your joy. Say yes. Okay, y'all gonna get it in a minute. At some point, you gotta mature in your spirituality and not just recite scripture, but believe scripture. Say yes, somebody. David says, 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. That's your relationship. I shall not want. That's your supply. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That's your rest. He leadeth you beside still waters. That's your refreshment. He restoreth my soul. That's my healing. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. That's his guidance. For his name's sake, that's his purpose. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's my test. For thou art with me. That's his faithfulness. But then David pauses. He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. David, up to this point, said, God is our rest. He's our refreshment. He's our restoration. He's our purpose. He's our provision. But then David grows on his imagery of sheep and shepherd. Because David learned while working in his father's field what it meant to shepherd sheep. So now he switches the script and makes us sheep and God's shepherd. He said, in order for God to be with us, some of us need God's rod and God's staff. Yeah, right here, right here. The reason I know God's got me 
is because, not just because of green pastures and still waters, not just because of the valleys of the shadow of death. Y'all stay with me. But because there are times in my life I need him to use his rod and his staff on me. Watch this. Watch this. The rod and the staff are two different tools. One, the rod is a club. The staff is a stick. And it had a triple effect. First effect was that it kept straying sheep from getting away. The second was it gave confidence that the shepherd would protect you against wild animals. The third, it was an instrument to guide you along the path. Don't miss it, church. The first one was a club, just in case the sheep went astray. The shepherd would tap the sheep on the head and bring them back to the fold. The second one is that he would fight off wild animals. The third one is that he would lead the sheep. Okay, some of y'all sleep. I just explained to you the last 25 years of your life. And y'all missing church this morning. Because some of us haven't always been picture perfect. We haven't always dotted every I. But just like the first cause of the rod, some of us had to have God use his rod to bring us back to the fold. This ain't for the good folk in here. See, some of us can understand that some of the stuff that has happened in our life, it wasn't the devil doing it. It was God chastising us. He let some stuff happen in your life. He let some things fail in your life. He let your heart get broke sometime. He let you lose your money. He let you almost lose your mind. He let you almost go crazy. And he wasn't killing you. He was disciplining you because he was trying to get you back. Now, this shout is only for the real folk in here. Has God ever cause the bottom to fall out of your life when you didn't feel like going another further this ain't for the cute church folk in here this is for folk that know I've been through hell because God sent me there I've been broke because God sent me there I've been lost because God sent me there is there anybody that can testify that sometimes God had to discipline me Woo! everybody ain't gonna shout on this but God tells the children of Israel through Moses watch this he humbled you and caused you to hunger and then feeding you with manna which you did not know nor your ancestors know that, that man does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God go ahead and say it Coleman for some of us God had to use the rod to humble us he had to lower us down because we were too arrogant we were too proud we thought we got here because of us but God said no I got news for you don't let the smooth taste fool you you didn't get here cuz you that smart you didn't get here cuz you were that cute so I got to humble you I need 20 folk to jump up if God has ever had to humble you he had to break your heart he had to cause you to lose your mind slap your neighbor say he humbled me they don't know they don't know if you've ever gone from steak to ramen noodles he humbled you See, some of y'all were raised on the other side of the tracks where you always had steak, but I got a ramen noodle shout. God had to bring you down sometime to help you know that ramen noodle can taste like steak if you fake it. Is there anybody in here that could jump up right now? Because God had to, um. That's this. The book says, whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Somebody say, yes. I got a question. Has God ever humbled some folk in here? Hey, look at me. Hold on, Derek. Has God ever humbled some folk in here? Has God ever put you through some mess that you didn't want to go through? Don't play with Pastor Coleman. Shout it out. Has he ever put you through some mess? Can the same folk that said, yeah, tell God, thank you right now, because if it had not been for that stuff, you wouldn't be where you are. I wish I had some more folk in here, Lonnie. I wish some, wish some real folk that can look back and tell God, thank you. So the rod disciplined me. Somebody say yes. Y'all slow today. What's wrong with y'all? Not only did it discipline me, the rod protected me. The shepherd had the staff. So when the sleep, when the sheep went to sleep, the shepherd had the staff. So when the sheep went to sleep, the shepherd didn't have to. Because the shepherd stayed up all night making sure that wild animals did not come and snatch one out the fold. Can I pause? Can I? St this ain't on the script. I'm so glad that God didn't allow some stuff to snatch me. 
that, that was for 30 folk in here. Because some of y'all been in some situations where yo, <laughs> you should have been snatched. But because God was watching over you, he didn't let you go down too far that it caused you to call it quits. Okay, that's, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, um, the raw, God says, I will protect you. Some of y'all have been protected all of your life. I can't hear nobody. Why y'all? Okay, all right. Grandmama used to say he'll keep you from dangers. Half the church don't know nothing about that. You've been shouting over the seen stuff, but can you shout over the unseen stuff? What if God would have let happen what you didn't see happen to your life? You need to thank God for the unseen stuff. It's a bill that got caught up in the mail that didn't make it to your house. Is there anybody in here? Watch this. Watch this. Somebody shout, he's a protector. Say, he's a protector. Watch this. The rod was used by the shepherd to protect you. So just in case some wild animals came in the camp, the, the shepherd would jump up and he would fight back the wild animals. Do you know how many wild animals been trying to get at you since you were born? Somebody say yes. They've been trying to destroy you since the minute you got here. They've been trying to do away with you from the minute you got here. And I'm not talking about your body. I'm talking about your mind. I'm talking about your spirit. I'm talking about your soul. Because one blink of the wrong eye, you can lose your mind. But God is keeping your mind. He's keeping your ears. He's keeping your heart. He's keeping your soul. And you ought to give him a good praise right now. The book says, Psalm 91. Somebody say, he's my protection. Watch this, y'all. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in the darkness nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday a thousand will fall at your side ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you some of y'all been protected since you were born and you ought to give God glory right now because some stuff he didn't let happen watch this somebody say I'm protected watch this then it says not only does his rod discipline us not only does his rod protect us but his rod guides us somebody say it guides me but then he says let me go let me just go and do it. Here it is. Help me. Lonnie, help me. Come here. Let me do it. You got to do it for these folks because they don't. Move that over there. Y'all got time, right? Do it anyway. The the real folk will get this. The rest of y'all make a grocery list out. Because because watch this. Some stuff you've been through. Some folk know you. They don't know the church you. They know the real you. And because they know the real you, hold on, Derek, don't push me. The real you, they, knew, they know your faults, they know your mistakes, they know your failures, they know your nastiness, they know your griminess, and to them, God should have cut you off. Y'all missed the shout. Based upon what they know about you, they should have, God should have wrote you off because you ain't that saved. And you don't know God that much. You got more dark places than you got light places. And because of that, your enemies say, look at them. They come to church with all that shouting and praising. God, I expect you to cut them off. I expect you to write them off. They faking on Sunday morning. And then Monday through Saturday, they do whatever they want to do and won't even thank you. The expectation is that God will cut you off. God say, you must not know them like I know them. He'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I wish I had some folk in here 
that's ever had to laugh at your enemies because they thought you should have been cut off. But God took a napkin out. Laid it in your lap. Set the space settings up. Called your enemies in. He said, now watch what I'm getting ready to do. You thought I was going to write them off. But I'm getting ready to bless them in front of you. Is there anybody that's ever had God bless you in front of you? In the presence. In the presence of my enemies. Laugh as you want to. He prepared the table before me. God said, I'm not, I'm not too big that I won't be your waiter in front of your enemies. Y'all missed a shout. You missed it. You missed it. Because, because, because you ought to thank God. Some blessings you got because he sat you at the table. And you thought the blessing was for you. The blessing was for your enemies. So you can watch God bless you in front of the very folk who thought you should have been destroyed. Is there anybody in the house? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. That's why, that's why you need to thank your enemies. Send every last person that laughed at you. Send them a thank you card. Because if it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be where you are right now. If it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing right now. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemies. These are not for other people to sit down. These are the plates that God puts the food on. Well, Calvin, what's on the menu? If you're going to feed me, God, what's on the menu? Uh, not greens. Not cornbread. Not chicken. Huh? God said, I got some food better than that. <laughs> right here, he got mercy. Right here, he got grace. Right here, he got forgiveness. Right here, he got compassion. Right here, he got love. I'm going to take, take all I need. Some of us Somebody needs double grace and double forgiveness and double mercy. Somebody ought to praise him right now. That's this. That's this. That's this. That's this. Some of y'all had to go back for that mercy bowl three times. Some mess you got caught up in. Lord, thank you for keep filling it up because I keep messing up. And when I keep messing up, I'm going to need some more. I'm going to need some. I need some more mercy. And I, I need some more love. And I need some. What's this? What's this? He prepareth. And when it's good to you, when it's good to you, you start wiping your mouth in the enemy's face. You thought I should be dead. You, you thought I should have been gone. You, you thought he was going to throw. But I didn't have some of his forgiveness and let me just tell somebody, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Is there anybody in the taste and see? Yeah. What's this? What's this? While I'm at the table, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. More. Got more. Now, what's this? Open it up. Open it up. Open it up. Put it in your hand. Put it on my head. Put it on my head. Thou anointest my head with oil. He anointeth my head with oil. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Stay right there. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to kill you. Watch this. Shamika, when the shepherds would watch over their sheep, sometimes the sheep would have flies. He put the oil on him. Lord, y'all about to, church about to go crazy. Church about to, y'all about to go crazy. Watch this. Watch this. I feel you, Lana. I feel you. Watch this. Watch me. Watch me. Hold on. Watch this. 
flies would fly into the nostrils of the sheep. So when flies would fly into the nasal cavity yeah, yeah, of the sheep, yeah. sometimes it would go into their brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in other words, the, the flies would go into their nasal cavity, go into their brain, cause them to go crazy, and they would kill themselves. So the shepherd, because he wanted to sleep the sheep to rest, he would have to take oil. Give it to me, Doc. Go, give it to me. And he put it on their head. Because with the oil on their head, it would keep the flies from coming in their nose. Now, our problem is not in our nasal passages. Our problem is in our head. So God said, next time the devil comes to mess with your head, you just tell him, I'm anointed. You can't mess with my head because I'm anointed. Doubt, you got to go. Fear, you got to go. Trouble, you got to go. I'm anointed. Slap three people say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You can't have my mind. You can't have my spirit. You can't have my soul. Somebody needs to shout right now. Shout, I'm anointed. How you make it so far? I'm anointed. How you keep from losing your mind? I'm anointed. How you keep from calling it quits? I'm anointed. How do you keep your head up? I'm anointed. Slap your neighbor. Say, I'm anointed. He anointeth my head with oil. Slap somebody and say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed whether you like it or not. I'm anointed. I ain't looking for you to vote for me. I don't need no consensus from nobody. I can walk in my job and say, I'm anointed. Yes, sir. Cup, cup. Water. He prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemies he anointeth my head with oil my my cup stop here's the problem here's the problem if you went into somebody's house in ancient Jewish culture if they gave you half a glass it meant they want you to stay long Y'all just missed a shout. But if the guest wanted you to stay, he would overflow your cup. Go on, do it, Doc. Overflow. 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 Don't worry about it. Keep going. Overflow. I don't care about this. Overflow. Stop. Stop. Here, here it is. Here it is. If you are not living in the overflow, that means you missing the blessing God has for you. So, some of y'all just ask God for a little bit. But I'm bold enough to ask him for everything. Can I find five people in here to tell God, give me everything. I want your overflow. I want every, every blessing, send it to me. Every miracle, send it to me. Every joy, send it to me. Throw your hands up and say, send it now. Overflow. 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 Watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. So watch this. So watch this. Watch this. Stop. Stop. Y'all just missed a shout. You missed a shout because you don't think with that third eye. I had to turn to him and ask for it. But the book said he already knows what I need before I ask. Go ahead, Doc. Pour that right there. And pour it and don't stop. Keep going. Overflow. Slap three people. Say, I'm living in the overflow. I'm dancing in the overflow. I'm shouting in my overflow. Everything I need is an overflow. Is my hey. Yes, God. Yee. Thou preparest a table uh -huh. before me yes, sir. in the presence of mine enemies. Yes, sir. Thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over sure surely you want to know how you made it here with your crazy self you want to know after all the mistakes you made and I made and all the failures we've made and everything that we've done 
You think it's because you've been so smart. You think it's because you're so cute. You think it's because of where you came from. Let me blow your mind this time. The only reason you got here is because surely goodness and mercy has been following you all the days of your life. Is there anybody that can shout right now, goodness and mercy? My sister. Some of y'all know, some of y'all know that the only reason you're here is not because you was the saltiest fry in the bag. You're here because you got two twins following you. When you get up in the morning, you got goodness and mercy. When you get in your car, you got goodness and mercy. Is there anybody that can give them glory? You got to get this. You can't just recite the 23rd Psalm. You got to get the 23rd Psalm. David said, when I look at my life, this is the only explanation I have. Don't you ever think when you leave your house, you're walking by yourself. Somebody ought to praise them right there. Let me go on close. Pastor Mike calls me Monday. He said, Coleman, he said, my cousin called me. He said, the doctor said, he said, because of the uniqueness of your blood, he said, the doctors are going to want to test your blood to find out how you survived thus far. Mike told his cousin, he said, they can test all they want. They ain't going to find it there. Something within me that holdeth the rain. Something within me that banishes pain. That, that was for free. It ain't in the blood. Tap your neighbor. Say, it ain't in the blood. It ain't in the blood. It ain't in the blood. There's something that's protecting him. There's something that's been covering him. It's called goodness and it's called mercy. The same reason you're here is not because of your own. Is there anybody that can shout right now? Watch this. Watch this. Thank you, Lord. So, we're talking. We're talking. Watch this. Watch this, Lafayette. We're talking. He said, Coleman. He said, I read this story. He said, I'm going to give it to you. Give it to your folk. I said, I'm going to give it, Doc. He said, give it to me. He said, story of a little boy who lived with his parents in the Florida Everglades. They said, he lived in the Florida Everglades. The boy was in the backyard playing. He said he was playing, and the alligator came up out of the back of the Everglades, came and snatched the boy. He started screaming. The father comes out. He grabs the boy by the hand, both his arms, and starts pulling him away from the alligator. He said, I'm pulling him away from the alligator. Boy lost one of his legs. Had scars on the other leg. So it's a miracle he survived. So while he's in the hospital, the father gave permission for the reporters to interview the boy. So the reporters go to the boy and they say, man, how'd that feel? He said, it was scary. He said, do you mind us seeing your scars? He lifts the sheet back and he's got the bandages over the leg that was taken off. He's got bandages on this leg. And he rolls them and rolls them and sees scars. Shows the reporter scars on his leg. But then the little boy said, but I got some better scars. He said, what? The boy said, what? He shows them his arms. He said, I got better scars. The reporter said, I don't understand. What you mean better scars? He said, these scars are from the alligator. He said, but these are from my daddy who wouldn't let me go. I wish I had a church in here. Some of y'all got some scars because your daddy wouldn't let you go. Can I get some folk to jump on your feet? Slap three people and tell them I got some scars. I got some better scars. Because my daddy wouldn't let me go. Somebody give them glory right now. Watch this. Surely. Thank you for the scars. You didn't get here because you were so smart because you ain't that smart. And neither am I. I got here because the Lord is my shepherd. Somebody give him praise right there. He's my shepherd. He's my shepherd. Can you just hug three people and tell them God's got you? Let's go, Derek. God's got you. Rest on your feet. Let's go. I am still here. God's got me. 
God's got you. God's got you. Did y'all get it? God's got you. Rest on your feet. Come on, we worship him right now. How many of you know you're here because of the grace of God? He was your shepherd when you were a sheep. Lift your hands. It is by the grace. By the grace of God. Come on, lift your hands. That's your song. That's your song. I am still here. It's by the grace. I am still here. I am still here. It's by the grace of God. Take a moment and worship your God. Lift your hands and worship your God. I am still. It's by the grace. It's by the grace of God. It's by the mercy of God. It's by the grace. Hold on, Sherry. Hold on. Some of y'all know you didn't get here on your own. 30 of y'all can testify that you had some near-death experiences. Can I get a witness in the building? And if you didn't have a near-death experience physically you had one mentally anything could have took you out of here and this should not be a worship service this should be your memorial service so when we sing I'm still here you find your place God, and you sing to your God the reason why you're here lift your hands I am still here come on By the grace, I'm still here. I'm still here. Yes, by the grace, that's the reason I'm here. That's the reason I'm here. Yes, by the grace. I am, I am still here. It's by the grace. Hands lifted, eyes closed. If you're here and you know, you know that you know, you've never confessed Jesus.